Hey everyone, welcome to this training video in SC300 Microsoft Identity and Access Administrator series. In this series, I will cover the SC300 modules in bite-sized small videos that will be easier for you to follow and understand the core concepts of identity and access management. This will also help you preparing for the SC300 exam. In this video, I will take the learning path on Explore Identity in Microsoft Entra ID and its first module that is Explore Identity. I will take the rest of the modules in the upcoming videos. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe it for future updates on videos and hit the bell icon for the notifications. My name is Navneet Kumar and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer. The learning objectives of this learning path are Review the identity capabilities of Microsoft Entra ID. Explore zero trust principles in context of identity and access. Configure the basic capabilities of authentication and authorization. Well, without any further ado, let's get started with Explore Identities. In Explore Identities module, I will discuss identity landscape, zero trust and identity, why use an identity, identity administration concepts, authentication and authorization topics, auditing in identity and supplemental topics. If you already have the experience into identity and access management, this video can work as a refresher. And if you are a beginner, then this will provide you the comprehensive knowledge about the identity and its role in the IT landscape. Well, if I talk about the identity landscape, then the identity is one of the important pillar of the IT technologies because it ensures that only the legitimate people have access to the corporate applications and resources. The identity landscape at Microsoft is bifurcated into different uh, parameters. These can be like zero trust. Zero trust is a principle that defines the uh, verifying the each service request explicit, explicitly on all available data points so that the information is provided to the legitimate people using the least privilege model so that the access is granted based on the necessity of the users. Assume breach is always assumed that there might be a breach so that we are putting the authentication and the security settings in the identity to ensure that only legitimate people connect and access the resources securely. During this learning path, we will discuss about these topics in much more details. Second is the identity decentralized provider. This defines that what is the source of the identity, where from the identities can come. We will be talking about the Microsoft Entra ID, but also along with that the business to business or business to consumer and the new approach that is verifiable credentials as well. Number three is the actions which defines the authentication for proving the identity, authorization to provide the access, administration for day to day configurations and the audit reports. Number four is the usage for cryptography, the service are paid the licenses the license assignment number five is maintain protect detect and respond to the threats talking about securing the assets where they are with zero trust it becomes important because if you look at the image the classic approach shows you that we secure our corporate resources behind the corporate firewall so this is what we are setting up as a trusted network the employees used to connect to this corporate network securely either by coming to the office premises or connecting remotely using the remote access tools like vpn then they used to access the resources and applications but the things got changed during or after the covid because we had to rely heavily on the uh, internet access or the external network access for these corporate resources to be productive. That is why if we are exposing our resources to the external networks and can't keep them behind the corporate firewall, 
then there is no concept of trust. This is what we call zero trust. In this case, any incoming service request for the corporate applications or data need to be authenticated on all available data points, be it the IP address, geolocation, the device platform, the application, application type, the protocols of the application, and by placing different security policies like the conditional access policies to protect these resources. We will discuss about them in much more details. But one of the important pillar of the zero trust we have recently seen is verify explicitly to access or to um, limit the access of the users to their provided resources only. Well, if we discuss about the zero trust concept in much more details, then Microsoft zero trust principles are in this way. The zero trust principle of Microsoft focuses on the security approach where nothing is trusted by default as I mentioned. Whether it is insider or outside the network, here are some of the key principles that are there in a simpler form. Number one, verify the identity explicitly. Always confirm who a user or device is before granting the access. Use the tools like multi-factor authentication to strengthen these verifications. We use the user identity and the location, device health, service or workload context, data classification, anomalies, these different data points to validate this incoming request. Next is the principle of least privilege. The least privilege principle ensures that you provide the minimum permissions that are required by the employees to do their job. This reduces the risk of unnecessary exposure of the resources that we can achieve with lots of services like just-in-time administration, just enough access, the JEA. These are the time-bound accesses. We have the cloud services like privileged identity management through which we can achieve it. Risk-based adaptive policies, data protection against our band vectors we can configure. Next is assume breach. Always act as if an attacker is already inside your network. So you continuously monitor and respond to the potential threats. This becomes very important. In this case, you can further strengthen it by segmenting your network, the users, devices and app awareness also. Then the encryption, all the sessions end to end. Use the analytics for any threat detection, posture, visibility and improving the defense of your environment. You can use the inspect and log all the traffic. This continuous monitoring and log of all the network activities to detect any suspicious behavior or breaches can improve the security posture of your workloads running in cloud or in on-premises. When it comes to deploy the zero trust solutions, in this case, this zero trust strategy requires a flexible access to the application system and the data. And for this, we can secure our identities. And here, as you see in the image, the visibility automation and orchestration can be done for the identity, endpoint, data, applications, infrastructure, and network. The protection is supposed to be implemented at each layer. If I talk about the zero trust at Microsoft, this is the integrated set of solutions and capabilities that is offered as the by the Microsoft as a built-in control that make the implementing a zero trust security model across the organization achievable at scale. Here we see that we can protect the identities. These identities can be the human beings, the user accounts, the non-humans, be it the devices, like the device IDs or the software workload identities like the service principles. We can configure the strong authentications for them like multi-factor authentications using the authenticator app or the conditional access policy based multi-factor authentication. We need to protect the endpoints that can be either corporate owned devices, COT, COD or bring your own device. On endpoint management, I have done a series on MD102. If you have not watched it yet, so I will recommend that you can visit the MD102 playlist on my channel where you will find the 
entire MD102 series for the endpoint management using the modern endpoint manager Microsoft Intune. Well, the device compliance can be defined. We can define the device configuration policies and apply them to the required endpoints so that we can see that whether the devices are compliant with the corp corporate policies or not. Policy optimization can be done by governance, compliance, security posture assessment, productivity optimization can be done. Zero trust policies are there for evaluation and enforcement. Threat protection is done with continuous assessment, threat intelligence based on the collected data or the intelligence provided, we can uh, mitigate the chances of attacks. Forensics response automation is there. For network, we can bifurcate it into public and private network. The endpoints can be secured separately. As far as the data is concerned, we can do the classification of the data, labeling, encryption of this data at rest, at uh, travel or processing. Applications, we can use adaptive access, be it the software as a service applications or on-premises applications. The adaptive access can be con uh, configured with the uh, Defender for Cloud Apps kind of services or any other the CASB solution, the Cloud App Security Broker service that is acting as a proxy in between the endpoints and the applications to see the behavior of users, how they access these applications. As far as the infrastructure is concerned, so we can uh, protect it. Uh, runtime controls are there on the infrastructure, so we need to secure the runtime as well, be it serverless containers, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or internal sites. Well, Let's talk about the architecture framework. Identity is an important pillar in the Azure architecture framework. As I discussed earlier, you should adopt the cloud adoption framework and build for cloud using the WAF, well architected framework. I will put the link of both of the frameworks. These frameworks have been designed by Microsoft's patterns and practices team who continuously works with the clients and uh, the based on their research they keep uh, publishing these frameworks that you can adopt to mitigate the risk and making more durable and resilient solutions well the identity if i talk about why an identity the identity is used to be able to prove that who we are with the help of authentication which can be multi-factor as well uh, we'll talk about that in much more details the factors of authentication first factor second factor or third factor to get permissions to do something is called authorization the report on what was done so is the audit trail that is kept in fact in older times we used to call these servers 3a servers the authentication authorization and auditing to be able to self-administer an identity we have added administration also into it the authentication user sign in experience, trusted sources of these identities, federative protocols we can use for single sign on, level of assurance. For authorization, how and where are the authorizations handled that we define with the help of a scope in the delegation of control. Can a user access the resource and what can they do when they access it? So based on the actions we can control it, read, write or required permissions we can provide for these CRUD operations. Next is the administration, single view management, applications of business rules, uh, automated requests, approvals and access assignments. We also can do the entitlement management to provide all the necessary resources to the employees upfront. Auditing tracks who uh, does what, when, where and how, focused alerting, in-depth collating reporting and the governance and compliance we achieve with the help of this. Talking about the identity providers, an identity provider also referred as IDP is a system that creates, manages and stores the digital identities. These digital identities can be the user names or the service principles or device IDs and their credentials like passwords or certificates. It helps verify who you are when you log in to access these services. Its job is to authenticate the service requests and keeping a track of that. Microsoft Entra ID is one of the example of identity provider. 
the key features of the identity providers are like user identity repository it stores the identities and their attributes then the authentication system that verifies the identities and issues the token security protocols that are used to protect against any unauthorized access and the attacks trust the idp is a trusted source to confirm the identities it ensures only authorized users can access the systems and applications that too in a secure manner identity is a control plane when we talk about this term control plane that has been into the industry for decades if you are an old school guy so you will realize that the control plane we used to use this term in the networks where we use it to route the traffic in the network using the control planes here in the cyber security and zero trust context the control plane is actually the ident identity that we are using uh, or uh, uh, the in the idp the identity is the uh, core for managing the access and securing the modern it environments it serves as the central point that controls who has access to what when and how since we have moved to different form factors of devices and the networks to access the corporate applications today it is required that we need a central point to decide to secure the access to our resources and that is identity today so identity is the new perimeter that is also a uh, very impo important thing to understand today is that it doesn't matter how secure your infrastructure your network is it is important to protect your identities first because if the identity is compromised then it doesn't matter how your uh, how secure your infrastructure is the things may compromise easily identity is the control plane identities like the username passwords or the role assigned to them are central authority that govern the access to all resources applications data systems instead of securing the perimeter like the traditional network security we were doing with the help of the dmz networks the demilitarized zones security policies are enforced around the identities of users and the devices this ensures that only trusted identities be it users or devices can access the specific resources based on their roles or the risk levels we have the access control in it identity is used to verify that who you are and determine what you are allowed to access this could be a service application or a sensitive data that you are trying to access the authentication confirms your identity be it the password or the multi factor authentication through biometric or the uh, one time passwords you configure it uh, you validate it the authentication checks what you are uh, uh, what you are uh, providing or what your identity is who you are you prove that and the authorization checks that what access has been granted to you zero trust model is there for um, securing these identities and it should be the starting point for the identities today to configure consider using the zero trust principles in your environment well this brings to the end of this module in the next video i will cover identity administration related concepts i hope this video was informative to you thanks for watching and do subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet